This uh, particular pollen is a yellow pollen, yellow little globule. And when we mounted it, we mounted it in a couple of different refractive index liquids. But we'll start out by looking at it in a liquid that has a refractive index that's uh, just a little different than the pollen. But now in looking at the uh, pollen grains, we can see that there are a couple of different types of pollen here. Kind of scan around. Looking at the different pollen types, see which ones are most common. Once we determine the ones that are most common, we'll go into a more detailed analysis at a higher magnification. For pollen, we typically have to use the 40x objective, which of course takes us up to uh, in excess of 400x magnification. Now let me explain why it's more than 400. In this particular microscope, the objective, the 40x objective, will magnify 40 times. As the light travels through the microscope and gets into the intermediate tube, remember this is a polarizing microscope, so we have an intermediate tube that contains the analyzer, one of the polarizing filters. This intermediate tube magnifies again by about 1.25 times. And in different types of microscopes it'll be a different function, a different multiplication. And then it comes up into the head. And in the head of the microscope we come up into the oculars. The oculars are ten times magnifiers. So we end up with a magnification of ten times here, forty times here, there's our four hundred. And then depending upon your particular microscope, the intermediate tube may add another additional magnification step. So as we look at these pollens, we'll need to go to the 40x objective to more thoroughly characterize them. There's another feature that comes out in these grains if we use a different refractive index media the amount of detail that you can see is dependent upon the difference of refractive index between the mounting medium and the particle that you're looking at. Refractive index basically is just a measure of the number of outer shell electrons in the molecular structure of the material. When we use an organic mounting medium, and most of the mounting mediums are organic, because they have carbon, there are a large number of outer shell electrons. And so carbon-based structures tend to have a higher refractive index than other elements that make up compounds. When we look at the atomic number of the element, we get an indication of how many electrons are there and where the refractive indices are going to be. So that when we're looking at things like iron or calcium, a calcium-based compound is going to have lower refractive indices than an iron-based compound, simply because the atomic number of iron is higher than that of carbon or calcium. The uh, difference in refractive index, if it's high, then we'll see a lot of what is called relief in the structure. And so we'll see a lot of shadow detail that tells us what the morphology of the surface of the pollen grain is. If the refractive index is close to that of the pollen, then we'll be able to see more detail on the inside of the pollen grain. One of the main differences between an electron, a scanning electron microscope and a light microscope is that with a light microscope you're actually looking through the material. You can see structure inside of the object that you're looking at. 
Whereas with a scanning electron microscope, you can only see the surface, the outside. You can't see the detail that's inside. So when we're looking at these pollen grains, one of the things that's going to help us identify what plant the pollen came from is just the structure that we see inside the pollen grain. A pollen grain is made up of multiple layers so that on the outside the surface texture will show up. We'll see some nice examples of that. As we look deeper into the grain we'll see the what's called the exene which is the outer layer and the ending which is the inner layer. The relationship between these two may be a series of columns. It can be in direct contact with one another. Or they can actually be lunate. In other words, large openings in the outer shell that allow us to look into the inner shell. Uh, one example of that, it, we'll look at that shortly, but it's uh, dandelion. Dandelion has a very interesting structure, and that's actually an orange packet. We'll see that a little later, too. But enough talk, let's go and look at some pollen grains. Now as we look at the pollen grains, we can see this net-like structure over the surface of the grain. That's called a reticulate pattern. So this is a reticulated pollen grain. Notice also that the grains are very circular in structure. These grains are actually spherical. We can tell by the fact that their order, their position, is somewhat random. As we focus a little deeper, we can see that the reticulum continues around the grains. The reticulate structure is the same as we go around the entire grain. We can see still we're getting a circular cross-section. Now what we want to do is focus down toward the cross-section of the pollen grain. And you can see here that we can actually see the little columns that hold up that net-like structure. That those little columns are baculate. And again, uh, another characteristic of this pollen grain. Now what we're going to do is look around in the field of view and see if we can find a pollen grain that actually shows us how many pores or how many fissures might be in these typical grains. And here we have one in a nice orderly position. We can see that it actually has three different colpi, three different fissures symmetrically placed around the grain. So this is a triculpate grain. These characteristics are sufficient to identify this particular plant as rapeseed, the plant that cronola oil comes from. That's all we'll look at here in the first row. Let's go now to the third row, which are the orange pollen packets in this particular set, and we'll look at those in the next episode.